Hello and welcome back to Dicebreaker, where today we played Funkoverse strategy game, Harry Potter. Whoop, whoop. Which you were more excited about than I was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Funkoverse is a strategy game, as you can tell by the name. It's kind of it's more like a tactics game, really. You've got a grid-based map with little Funko characters on. You move them around. They have their own special actions, but you can also just roll dice and hit each other. It's it's all very straightforward. Yeah, it's very simple. You're moving around a grid, you're hitting people. There's different game modes. So the most standard one is like the little tutorial one where you just have to take out the enemy. Mm -hmm. uh, you've also got one where you have to go for the leaders. You've got capture the flag. Uh, you've got like control certain areas. And then you've got like a get in the center territory kind of king of the hill mode. Uh, they're all pretty straightforward as well. There's not a whole lot of difference between them. Mm -hmm. I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Just gonna throw that out there. Don't hold back any punches, please. This feel, I'm just confused at why this exists. I mean, I know why it exists, to, to generate money, but I don't, I don't think there's any real purpose to it. Because if you're a fan of Funko Pop, which, that's your opinion. <laughs> but if you're a fan of Funko Pop, then you're not getting real Funko Pops. You're getting small, cheaper versions. Like they've all, they've got like these weird seams showing where you can see like the I don't know I don't spend a lot of time with Funko Pop so I'm not entirely sure what the quality standard is but these are not very well made like the the paint on the sculpts is like it's not good right you wouldn't buy this as a collector's item stop just sitting there agreeing <laughs> with me <laughs> I no I I don't agree with you um, I don't necessarily think they're badly made I know I know what you're saying about like. The seams seem quite out there, and the, the paint job's not ideal. But they're cute. They're quite cute. They're just because they're small. <laughs> yeah, because they're small, they're cute, and also like I, I'm not a Funko collector, but <laughs> but but this would be a nice way to get some Funko into my life. But this is what I'm saying. They're not they're not Funko Pops. They're like off brand almost. You know, like they don't. They don't even match Funko Pops, admittedly, not very high standards of quality. And I, I think it's kind of weird that... I would understand if they were like, here's rules so that you can play a game with stuff that you already own. Right. But it's it's not that. It's if you, you probably could, right? If you already own Funko Pop Harry Potter figures, buy the same ones but worse and smaller so that you can play them on a board game? Do you know what I mean? It's weird. And, I, and the board game, I'm just going to throw this out there, is pretty dull. So it's not real. I don't understand who this is aimed at, apart from you. You're going to say children, which I understand. Um, OK, so I think there's a, a few different ways to look at this. <laughs> First of all, I think if you're intrigued by Funko Pop, if you like Harry Potter, this is like a kind of cheap way of getting into some Funko Pop and having a game at the same time. The game is simple, but I found it fun. Like it's. It is very simple. Like, there's not much to it. Although, it's complicated-ish to get into, actually, initially. But then, once you're playing it, it's like, OK, this is what I can do. This is what I'm doing. It's very simple. And actually, I thought it was quite nice. Like, it, And I, yeah, the kids thing is another thing. Like, I was saying, if I have, like, cousins who are 10 or 9 or even a bit younger than 10, like, I could easily play this with them, especially if they're Harry Potter fans. I just feel like, like, and we talked about this briefly yesterday, like ten year olds, they're smart we both think that they're smarter than people give them credit for. Yeah. And they could easily be playing some games that are actually good. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So like why bother with this? And if they're Harry Potter fans, there's there are other Harry Potter games out there. And yeah. like the miniatures combat game that they've already made, from what I understand, is relatively good. Mm hmm Like better than this. So I just don't understand where this sits and what because it, it's not just Harry Potter either. Because if, as you've got to your left here, we also got sent a Golden Girls version, which I don't fully understand. Which either. is awesome. I'm loving this. We haven't played this one yet. I'm assuming I mean, it's, it's very rules. much the same yeah, thing. Yeah. So I think I think the idea is that you can cross them over, so you can have Harry Potter fighting old women. But like, <laughs> <laughs> but like they've released like a Rick and Morty so version. Good. Like like all of pop culture basically is in the same way that Funko Verse is just all-consuming like th there will eventually be like a, a version of this game but for every franchise um, and yeah I don't know it just feels cynical to me like we were looking through the box and I couldn't find the name of the designer and I I was wondering 
did the person who designed this not get credited? Or did they choose not to get credited? <laughs> I would assume because it's done through a big company, like it's Warner Brothers, right? I would assume that it's just well, so it's, it's a made, bunch, a team that's probably. It's manufactured for Funko. It's only licensed by Warner Brothers okay. to get the Harry Potter name on it. And then it's made by Prospero Hall, who also do like the choose your own adventure stuff. Right. And I'm pretty sure that those have designers attached to them. I don't know, it's such a weird one. When I saw this, I was like, come on. Like, I, 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 was, I was shocked that it existed. But then also the cynic in me was like, of course this exists. I mean, I'm always, I'm always very cynical of games that are licensed to start with. So initially I was a bit like, uh, and then you and me and played it. And you, you, neither of you liked it. And I was like, okay, this game doesn't sound great. And then we played it yesterday, and I was like, it's not that bad. Like, <laughs> it's, I, as I said, I quite enjoyed it. And, like, it's just like a dice rolling, like, kill each other, get to points. Um, now, these, these bits, actually, I found a bit, like, dull. Um, they're one of the ways you can get points, right, if you interact with them. And there's, like, four of them on the board. And I did find it a bit, like, well... But this, this was during our... Um leaders game but it does it does by the scenarios it does look like they're in all of them yeah they just like get three points by standing next to this thing yeah so i could just essentially just forget about like battling you and just run around and collect those points because we both started off with points quite quickly by doing that um early on in the game and what i do like about the game as well is the little gems that come i with like it. the little gems the little gems are nice. They're very but pretty. I just like plastic gems, so I feel like that's that's kind of unfair. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, it's just right. Should we explain quickly how it works? So right, basically, let's say that you're playing the leaders game, right? For example, we have the good guys start in one corner and the bad guys start in the other corner, and then you'll notice that you try and put two people next to each other and their heads are too big for them to stay on the <laughs> sit on the spaces properly. But um, essentially, what you're going to be doing is on your turn, you have two actions and you have to assign your turn to one of the characters under your control, right? So let's say that Harry Potter is gonna do a turn. Once he's done all of his actions, he gets exhausted, and then when everyone gets exhausted, everything gets reset. So you can either move two spaces, and you can go diagonal. Um, you can challenge someone, which means that if you're next to someone, you roll dice. So you roll two dice, they roll whatever their defense stat is, so one. one in this case, and then uh, exclamation marks are crits, and then explosions are hits, and shields are defense. Apart from that, you can like stand people up and all that kind of thing. One of my biggest annoyances when we were playing is that it, it felt like it was never going to end, because you would spend your turn, you'd walk over, and then you'd hit me, and I'd get knocked down. And when you're knocked down, if you get hit again, you're knocked out, and that means that your character's essentially died, but they get put on like the thing to come back. Okay. And de depending on the game mode, they might just be gone forever or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but because one of your actions is just to stand up again, and you can also get your friend to come over and stand you up again, there was just this constant, like, I've knocked you down, oh, I'm back up again now. Oh, I've knocked you down, oh, I'm back up again now. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's like, they wanted to keep it simple enough that there was no health points or anything like that. But then it also just meant that, like, we were just doing the exact same thing. Like, at the start of the game, it was literally like, I'm going to move here, I'm going to move here, I'm going to activate that, I'm going to activate that, I'm going to move this person, I'm going to move this person. It was like we were just, like, playing against the mirror version of ourselves. Well, I guess, I guess that's why I'm kind of coming back to these things, because, I like, that's one of the ways you can earn points in the game. Is it just easier just to completely ignore each other and just try and get to the points first? Yeah, so those go on a timer when you, when you grab them. Mm -hmm. So, you, theoretically, you could just wait around. Yeah. But... <sighs> this is just, like... It just feels half-hearted, and I like I I don't mean to be the person who's just ragging on stuff, but it is like I just found no joy in this whatsoever. <laughs> what I'm curious about, actually, um, now that we're talking about it, is in Harry Potter, in the world of Harry Potter, this kind of makes sense, like as in you know, like killing each other or like you know hurting each other and and casting spells on each other. What do they do in this? It looks like they throw cakes at each other by the looks of things. No, that's that's one of the like special things. Right, Only one can, of them has a cake. Without opening it, I can see the actions <laughs> on the back. Place an ally Rose can see in a square adjacent to Rose, which is pretty much the exact same as um, 
yeah, Akio from Hermione Granger. P pick an ally or a token Hermione, conceive within three squares and place it adjacent to Hermione. So it looks like the. But what's the theme with like, am I just going to be slapping you onto the ground? Or what, what? what's the. I don't really life, understand the tie in with that one. If life isn't the same. fair, kiddo. Challenge four. If you win, you may also move this rival one square. That, that's the same. They all have the same abilities. I just. It's just half arse. This like, one also is 20 to 60 minutes, whereas Harry Potter is 60. Yeah. Like, even the fact that, because I'm not sure if you've noticed them on the camera yet, but you come with two little side characters who don't have special abilities. They can only do the basic ones. They're just these little tokens. I think that, that bit's a bit poor. Just, like, especially when you consider, like, these figures, and then these are also player figures, but they're literally, like, the complete opposite. <laughs> Of this, yeah. My, kind of. my biggest concern with this is that someone who, I don't know, collects a lot of Funko Pops or whatever and has heard that board games are popular now, mm -hmm. they pick this up and this is their first foray into what board games can be. And it's bad. <laughs> I don't want someone to have this be their first board game experience, you know? I don't know, but people like Ticket to Ride, and that's bad. Ticket to Ride isn't a bad game. That, whoa, hold up, <laughs> hold up. We can't, you can't just dunk on something that's completely irrelevant. <laughs> Ticket to Ride is miles ahead of this. Yeah, okay, cool. Exactly, no no argument there. But there's just, there's just nothing to this. It's just bland and dull and soulless, and it just feels like a, a way of selling cheaper versions of Funko Pops to me. And well, that's I do, not great. Yeah, the other thing that I don't really get is that the price tag on all of them when we're just having a look seems to be like around the 30 quid mark. And so, even though in this one you get like four figures, and in the Golden Girls one you only get two, but yet they're like the same kind of price yeah. point. I do wonder. These were costing the same amount, weirdly. Yeah. Like this was even sometimes cheaper. Yeah. Which was odd. And I don't know if that's just a weird defect of like how much of the smaller ones are available or something, but yeah, yeah odd. But there you go. There's probably the most negative video we've ever put out um, on <laughs> Funko vs. Harry Potter, and then also a quick look at the Golden Girls as well. Alex thinks it's all right. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be like, let's get out Funko vs. Can you ever see yourself bringing this out? If I was playing with probably a younger group, yeah. Probably not with like my my mates, not with my gaming mates. So like, quick question now. Imagine like a. I don't know, like a nephew or something mm -hmm. that you play this with. Why would you not play Quacks or, you know? Or I think this, I think if I'm thinking about like my non-gamer family, for example, I think Quacks, they'd be like, it's too much. And they, they would freak out. Whereas this is this, definitely too much for them, though. There's, there's more rules in this than there are. I than think, there is in something like Quacks. But I think the rules in this or kind of, of make sense with the theme and it's, like, if you're into Harry Potter, once again, I think you'd be like, oh, you know, I mean, it does make sense. You know, like, I'm going to put a spell on you and you're knocked down. Because you're mad. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Um, if you're interested, we'll have links in the description to where you can find out more. But more importantly, have a little look at some of the other videos that we put out where we actually enjoy the things that we're talking about. Uh, this has been Dicebreaker. Uh, some of those videos will be popping up in the bottom half of the screen. You'll also see a big button here that says subscribe on it. Subscribe right now! Click on that, subscribe to us. Also hit that bell icon and then you'll be notified whenever we put a new video live. And more importantly, have, have a lovely, lovely day. day. Why do you always do that? <laughs> I don't know.